always wondered what it would take to build an electric go-kart, and I wanted to find out. So one day, me and my friend hopped on Facebook Marketplace, and I bought one. Simple, right? Yeah, not exactly. Cut out. It cut out? When we first got it, it looked decent, but the moment we tried to drive it, the power would cut out. So right away, I started checking all the connectors and the controller settings to figure out what was wrong. But I did know it came with a 72 volt battery that was made from rental scooter cells that were just wired in series. So luckily, I had a spare 72 volt, 75 amp hour battery from one of my eShop's e-bikes, and this thing is a beast. The battery has 200 amps of max output, and that's about 14,400 watts of peak power. Along with the huge capacity and the metal case, it made it great for this go-kart build. But if you've watched my previous video, you know my dream setup is a 108 volt battery that will push around 43 kilowatts, and we may even do more than that. Now I couldn't just throw the new battery on the existing tray because it will just slide around everywhere. So what I did was I found a side panel from one of my previous e-bikes. After that, I just drilled some holes to bolt it to the frame and used some spacers and a ratchet strap to strap it down into place. After that, we were ready to fire it up again. This time we had no cutouts, so we were making progress. It was running so smoothly that we even let a few neighbors take it for a spin. And since I don't live in near a track, I asked the local CVS security guard if we could test it in their parking lot. And even with old tires, this thing had lots of grip. Now, we originally bought this cart just to use it as a test before investing in a full 60 to 80 horsepower setup, but we may have gotten a little carried away. And if you've ever used a far driver controller, you know they're amazing for performance, but the app is a little confusing. But thankfully, after years of building e-bikes and joining some Facebook groups, I started to figure it out. I raised the RPM limit and even bumped up the phase amps and suddenly, we needed a lot more space to test. Good. Before pushing it harder, we did have to make a permanent welded battery tray, but once that was done, we had the best test session yet. After the test session, we found some stuff that we can definitely upgrade down the line, but we also ran into some things that we had to tackle immediately so that we could test it again. And in the next video, I'm going to go over how I doubled the power with all of the same components that were on it in this video. 
and then also the things that I went through on the cart to make it feel even better.